So for the people at home, we'll do the same questions basically, but tell us who you are. Tell us why you're interested in this position. Uh, my name is Michael Mason. Uh, I am interested in this position because I have worked for the town of Hadley for approximately 15 years now. And I have served in essentially every position that we have. I started as a dispatcher, uh, worked, moved over to the police side to a special police officer, part-time, full-time, and uh, now a sergeant. And uh, with the passing of our chief, we've all had to take on a lot of extra jobs, and I probably serve as, as close to a operational captain or lieutenant uh, as you can get in, in another police department. I love this town and I love this department and the reason that I'm interested is because I want to make this place better. I know that we can do better. Uh, we are a great department now, but I want to be instrumental in moving this department forward and uh, I know that I'm the best person to do that. You want me to go first? Yeah, it's all yours. Fire away. <laughs> Mike, based on your 15 years experience here in Hadley, going starting as a dispatcher, moving up the ranks to where you currently are, what do you think are three critical skills that you've, based on your experiences, you've come to that you think are vital being the chief of police in the town of Hadley? Well, I think first and foremost, you need to be a leader. People need to know that uh, when you ask them to do something or tell them to do something, that is something that you are willing to do yourself. <coughs> Leadership is not something that comes overnight. It's something that's developed over time. And with the amount of time that I've spent here, I feel as if I've been able to build those skills to develop the trust and the mutual respect that's required to have people want to do what you say and follow you. I think another very important thing is the ability <coughs> to communicate with your personnel. Um, I just recently went to a training class with, that uh, had a lot to do with dealing with problem personnel and how to effectively <coughs> evaluate them. And one of the core concepts that they talked about was the ability to make sure that they understand exactly what you want. If they don't know what you want and you do it wrong, you can't really blame them. It's a failure in leadership. So the ability to communicate and be able to delegate tasks effectively, I think, is another of the core principles principles of, of being a chief here. And I think most importantly probably is commitment. And it's not only commitment to your agency, your personnel, it's commitment to the community that you serve. The people in this town want to know that you are here for them, no matter what. They want to know that you are committed to making the department better. They want to know that you're committed to trying to solve the issues that we do have as a department and get better and grow. So I think those are probably three of the most important things. Thank you. You're up, John. Uh, okay. My same question I had for you, other two. Um, if you are not chosen for a chief's position, uh, and we do create an assistant chief or captain, or lieutenant, or however it may turn out, uh, would you be interested in that position and, and apply for it? Certainly. Um, as I said before, I've served in every position that we have here, and my goal has always been to, whatever position I'm in, try to affect the department in a positive, positive way. While I feel like I could do a much, or be much more effective in moving the department forward from a chief's position, my goal is to help make this department better. So I certainly would be disappointed, but at the same time, I do have 
mission in mind, first and foremost. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the department. You probably know a little bit more than the other two candidates. So <laughs> it should be a little bit easier for you. What do you think the strengths of the department are right now? Personnel. That's Why? easy. Um, <coughs> we have a group of individuals, dispatch and police, who care about where they work. They care about from the building itself to the people that they serve. I have tried over the years to lead by example and um, show people that even the smallest things can go a long way. Route 9 cannot be our only concern. It is a major problem for us, but the people north and south of Route 9 are really a, the core reason that we do this job. And one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that we have been able to develop personnel that actually feel the same way as I do. They care about what they're doing. So I would say that's our greatest strength. Okay. So the flip side, what do you think the weaknesses are? Well, I've been to a lot of select board meetings. I've watched a lot of them on TV. And everybody knows that one of our major issues is our is financial in nature. That is something that I intend to, for lack of a better term, attack. Um, people need to understand that their police department is going to be, or public safety in general, is going to be fiscally responsible for what they're doing with their taxpayer dollars. They want to maximize their services while at the same time not blowing a budget to pieces. And as I said, that is certainly a hurdle that uh, that we need to get over. That is probably one of one of the weaknesses. The other one is really more of a core foundational concept. I've already, over the years, started working on policies, procedures, rules, and regulations to begin working towards a more professionalized police department. I wouldn't say it's a weakness, but an area that we can certainly get better is the building blocks, starting from the bottom and building up, and building a more professional Hadley Police Department. We need good, sound policies and procedures. We need accountability. We need to work towards employee um, enhancement opportunities and we need to evaluate our employees on a regular basis. Part of that comes from developing updated and applicable job descriptions for each and every position that we have. So we do have some of that in place now, so I wouldn't necessarily call it a weakness, but it's certainly a place where we can get better. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Um, one question you answered the last time, Mike, is uh, pros and cons of hiring between an internal and external candidate. Uh, how do you feel about that? Did you like my answer the last time? <laughs> <laughs> you say it again? I would be a um, little prejudiced if I made a comment right now. <laughs> um, very simply put, I understand the, the uh, perceived positives in searching for an outside candidate. I'm certainly not going to um, begrudge anyone for applying outside of their department because it, some people do believe that it offers, uh, it, it separates you from, from those people who you will be supervising and any possible perceived biases or uh, playing favorites, things like that kind of takes them out of the equation. So I can understand where that concept comes from. My thought is I don't necessarily see those as strengths. My strengths come from the fact that I do know our personnel. I do know our department. I know where we can get better. I know the strengths and the weaknesses of the people that I work with. I know my own strengths and weaknesses, weaknesses as well. I don't want to make it sound like I'm, I'm perfect. But essentially, having already spent the time 
to build the trust that is necessary to lead a department, I would say, I would suggest that an internal candidate can, is, is miles ahead of an external candidate uh, in that area. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, you're next. Oh, okay. Um, so, one, and again, a little, little bit repetitive from, from uh, our interviews, but um, could you speak uh, a little bit about your philosophy regarding um, the idea of public safety, you know, as opposed to, you know, police department, fire department? Uh, I think it's worth, worth everybody on the board hearing your views on that. Well, absolutely. Um, I, I truly believe that a public safety agency, public safety department is what where this town needs to be working towards. The separation of police and fire departments, uh, I I don't see a I don't see a benefit from that. I don't have a you know I don't have the budgets in front of me. I don't you know, have the numbers, but I can tell you that from what I know about our police side and our communication side budget. Our communication side budget really holds a lot of the building maintenance line items in it. And I know that the fire chief is uh, very excited to get more involvement in the communication side of our, of our agency and really kind of melding those two together. I think that's tremendously important that we work towards a common goal, begin to share responsibilities begin to share costs, to put it very simply. So public safety, police and fire as a combined process, I think, will go much further and will be much more beneficial for this town than continuing the way that it is. I'm very, very, I have a very good working relationship already with the fire chief. So essentially, we get the ground running. We're ready to go. It's just a matter of somebody saying go. All right, so let's talk a little about specials and part-timers. Tell us your views on specials and part-timers and how you see them helping or helping the department or being part of the department. The way our department is set up right now, we would probably not be able to operate as effectively without our specials and part-timers. It's just a, it's a fact right now. With manpower the way that it is, we contractually have positions that are solely dedicated to part-timers and specials that we must fill. We have those positions because we ask for them to get more people on the road. But essentially, they play a vital role in backfilling a lot of the other open areas that we, uh, that we need filled right now. We currently don't have a detective, so Sometimes our full-time officers are forced to work investigations and we need to fill those shifts. A lot of last-minute things and specials and part-timers are integral in, in helping us in that area. And they do it at a lesser rate. So, I hate to put it bluntly like that, but financially, they're a tool for us. So let's talk a little bit about partnering and uh, partnerships that may come about. You, you've heard about the dispatch uh, proposal that came out a while back. Regionalization. Regionalizing the, the, the dispatch. How, how would you feel about you know regionalizing dispatch or regionalizing other services within the department with other people around you? And what would you think the pros and cons of that would be? Well, a combined, a combined effort in, in law enforcement, public safety in general, anytime you combine efforts, uh, it's usually a good thing. Uh, there's usually some type of a cost savings there, and doubling your manpower uh, at the same price is almost always positive. I would never want to see our dispatch center go unless it is fiscally sound to do so. I believe that working towards professionalizing the, the communication center is really how I would approach that initially. But if the numbers are there and we can continue to have a professional communication center in a regional or, or combined, you know, uh, com 
combined uh, agency, then I would certainly like to see that happen. But as I said, the, to put it very simply, when you when you combine efforts in law enforcement, it's almost always a good thing. Okay. Any other questions for anybody? We worked through a whole list. <laughs> Just, just right. so what, what I just have to, I always have to have one more, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the top three things that you would like to do uh, if you were to become chief and get accomplished? Thank you for asking this one as well. <laughs> Number one would be uh, to establish and secure a uh, supervisory staff. As I said in the last interview, the amount of work necessary to, to to do all the things that I talked about, to revamp job descriptions and begin the building process towards possibly certification or accreditation, professionalizing our department, you need a solid command staff to work towards that end. You need a group of people who have the same end goal in mind to work towards. So number one would be... You can wait a minute. Don't Number one would be a, uh, establishing a command staff. Uh, number two uh, would probably be, as I said, working towards the professionalization of our, of our services. The undertaking of moving towards accreditation is not something to be taken lightly. It is not a free endeavor by any stretch of the imagination. And it's something that's going to take a lot of work. To that end, if we are, if, if that is our ultimate goal, and I do believe that it is, or at least, <coughs> at least putting us on par with those departments who are accredited or certified, that would be an undertaking that you know is not to be taken lightly. That's that that would be number two, just to begin working towards that. And the third, uh, the third probably most important thing is to prove to uh, the people in charge that we can be a fiscally responsible department. We need to, uh, our department cannot sustain the overtime spending. It, it's that simple <coughs> that, we, that we're spending right now. So number three would be to work towards looking to alternate, alternate ways to try to solve that problem. Which would be probably my first three. Okay. So, do you have any questions for us? I don't have any questions for you, but um, I would like to thank you all for uh, allowing me to be involved in this process. <coughs> it has been incredible. Uh, the search committee was about as professional of a search. I've never been involved in one, uh, but I did speak with uh, the two other candidates downstairs, which was super uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they mentioned that the, this process that, that they were in, they, they had been involved in things similar, but nothing to the extent that, um, that this town has put together. So I would like to recognize the committee for their efforts. Um, I know that the final meeting was public record. I don't know what the official ranking was. Uh, I've been told that I was ranked first. I'm not 100% sure on that. But what I would what I would ask is that I understand that uh, there are some other candidates in the process with some very impressive resumes. I understand that. I didn't really talk too much about my resume or about my references or anything like that because it's not my resume my references that are going to be leading this department into the future. Uh, it's me. You have not only the committee's recommendation, but also a tangible record to look at over the years that I've established and I've worked hard to make sure that the people in this town and the co-workers that I have know that I have always had the best interests of the police department in this town in mind. And I think not, 
not the least important and probably what I am the most proud of is the group of people that's sitting behind me right now. I'm sure not all of them are here to support me, uh, but the vast majority of them are. And they're not just my coworkers. Um, there are people from town who, out of the blue, called me or stopped into work and wished me luck and said, we're going to be there supporting them. That's something that I don't think um, can be taken for granted, can be taken lightly. So I would thank you all for uh, the opportunity and good luck with your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we, we probably are not going to make a decision anytime soon. We're going to take a break actually so Richard can do some things. And then we're going to let the public who's here and waiting and patiently let them talk to us. And then we'll probably then just decide whether we're going to make a decision or not. So you're welcome to stay or you're welcome to take a break and uh, slide out. Take a break. <laughs> okay? All right. So, thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break for everybody on TV World. Richard's going to do some things. Yeah. We'll